Well, Happy New Year 2024, and we're kicking it off with a QA. and a uh, A lot of great questions. Man, too many to answer, but these were some of the top ones that we Yes, we tried we to compile through. a list, mm -hmm. so yeah. we'll try to be <laughs> concise in answering and fast. We have little man joining us, so yeah. we don't know how long he's going to be happy. He's happy right now. We'll, <laughs> we'll see. see. Okay, one of the top questions we got was, what does Chad do for a living? What do I do for a living? Um, so ever since I was 15, I did residential remodel. I learned from some general contractors up in Indiana, then out in Oklahoma, and just kind of all around. Um, and I love it. I love remodeling. And so- It's really good at Since, it. <laughs> well, she's sweet, she's biased too. But um, since moving to Florida, uh, I've only worked with a couple guys, and uh, I've lost my main team, my main crew, Trace and Warden, uh, sadly. But I've done several renovations while down here in Florida, kitchen remodel, uh, a couple bathrooms, some flooring jobs, just different things um, that have definitely kept me busy. Uh, on top of working with the Chad and Aaron Co., I, I build a lot of the, the items that we, that we sell. I correspond with the people that we work with, a great team of people, and um, I also am trying to assist um, the main heartbeat behind it, and that's Erin, and all of her creative ideas. And so um, between that and, and yeah. being a dad, uh, I love it. Do you resent growing up with cameras? I had a lot of questions about my childhood and how I feel about that and the camera life and all of that. Um, for me personally, I feel like it was a huge blessing and really a benefit for our whole family because it allowed us to do things that we would have never been able to do if it were not for the camera crew. Yeah. Um, we got to go to a lot of different places, different theme parks, get, yeah. get to do a lot of family get togethers. Yeah. Um, they flew in the whole entire family, you know, after a few years so we could have more get togethers. So I I feel like it was an open door really to grow stronger as a family. I never felt pressured or anything like that into it. I just felt like it was an opportunity. And honestly, I fell in love with the crew. We still keep up yeah. with them. It became like family. Yeah, and I feel like they really were part of our family. They see your hard times. They see your wonderful mountaintop experiences. So. Yeah, when I look back on it, it was really a wonderful thing yeah. and a privilege I feel like not many people get the opportunity to have, but because my parents are crazy and amazing <laughs> at the same time, <laughs> God allowed us to do that. Yeah. And we have the best home videos anybody yes. could ask for. Like we go back and we're like, wow, we, we watch them with the kids and it's just... Our kids the, the memories are, love them. Are, are love wonderful. Them. And so there, I mean, yeah. there's so many different benefits that, we, that we've seen from it, and it's, it's been a blessing. Next is, are you breastfeeding and how long do you plan to? And yes, I am breastfeeding. I feel like it's such a special time as a mom to have that bonding with their baby. So it's something I really look forward to with each baby. How long? I always try to at least go to a year. Um, Everly, I went to at least 18 months. So she was probably my longest, but yes, it's something I really enjoy as a mother. Um, and he's growing like a weed. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's cute as pie. Do you have recommendations for a podcast? I do have multiple recommendations because I am always listening to podcasts at least three or four times a week. That's kind of my time to regroup and challenge myself spiritually. Or relationally, I feel like it's just a way to say where am I at here and how can I grow. So I will leave my top three podcast recommendations in the description below this video. So if you are looking for a good podcast, these are some of my favorite. First would be Love Worth Finding. This is an app, but you can also find it on any podcast platform. Um, it's Adrian Rogers. He has so many powerful messages on everything you can imagine from bitterness, anger, you know, all these emotions. They're all topical, aren't they? So you can search yes, a topic you can or have something. Parenting, marriage, family, there's just so many options. But I find that his way of communicating is so 
personal and so easy to relate yeah, with. Practical. He's just such just down to earth. a humble man. Yeah. So I have never listened to one of his messages without being um, just challenged spiritually. He's going on to be with Jesus now. So it's kind of a compilation of his whole life and ministry, all of his messages there. So you will love that one. Next, my next favorite would be Scott Pauley. And he yeah. had, he's an evangelist and he has a podcast yeah. called Enjoying the Journey. Um, you can find that on his website. Um, I'm hoping he gets an app. But his messages are so easy to listen to because he releases a new one every day and they usually are just 10 minutes long. So it's something you can start your day with literally yeah. while you're brushing it's your teeth and getting ready, freshening up. So it's something, he, he just really makes the Bible come alive. So he opens up these passages in the Bible and you leave thinking, wow, how did he get that? You know, it's yeah. like, He's at such a higher level, I feel like, than I am spiritually that it just makes it, it's amazing. It's yeah. very challenging. And then last would be Chip Ingram. Mm -hmm. He has um, a ministry called Living on the Edge. And he has an app as well. His, I feel like, I love that you can go in and find a series. And you can yeah. follow a series. He, he has a series on finding peace, um, choosing joy, choosing joy. Uh, finding hope. Um, a series on anger that is really amazing. Um, all these different, I feel like, relational things that you really want to hear. Um, just phenomenal. Advice for someone who is not right, raised religious, but they feel drawn to God now. I think that's a really great question. I cannot necessarily relate to that because we were both raised in Christian homes and I feel like that was a huge blessing. Um, to have that opportunity to be able to learn more about God and grow in our relationship with Him. Um, but I feel like every person really has to make that choice in their own heart um, if they're going to follow Christ. And I know it might be confusing as far as where do you start? Um, what does that look like on a daily basis? And I feel like for someone want, wanting to draw closer to Christ and learn more about Him, to start out by just reading the Bible. Um, I see the Bible as God's love letter to us. So start in the New Testament, maybe the book of John. I feel like that kind of lays it out in a really clear presentation of the gospel and what Christ came here to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, surround yourself, find a church family yeah. that you can start visiting and surround yourself with people that um, are wanting to grow in their relationship with the yeah. Lord. And they're patterning their life after is it the Bible, yeah. Yeah, so great question. And yeah. also, as a little side note, the last podcast I recommend, recommended with Chip Ingram, he has a whole series on new believers finding Christ. And it's it's really great for someone yeah. that's just yeah. learning about on all, the Lord. On all of those, those yes. podcast platforms that she mentioned earlier, there will be topics about you know finding christ and be, getting saved and then where do you go from there and like so yeah it's all it, there's a lot of wonderful things there will you be going to i love you day oh, yeah. and what is the theme so if you do not know my family um my parents mm -hmm. throw a huge i love you day valentine's party they've done that for years 14 before we got years yeah before we got married and, and it is kind of, kind of like our family Christmas, every holiday compiled in one. It's huge, everybody's there. <laughs> and my mom is so creative oh, yeah. and she works on this for months. So with she every party, she has a theme. So we've had growing old together, roaring 20s, princesses and knights. Yeah, um, times, yeah. Last year was spies. Um, there's, there's so many Bible characters. Yes, I Bible mean, characters. I, uh, Noah's Ark. I think we just have to kind of. It's it's unbelievable. But yeah. now that our children are so excited about it, I feel like it takes it to a new new level. Yeah, they're a lot older. Yeah. Um, because they get even more excited than we do. But this year's theme is going to be Little House on the Prairie, <laughs> and our kids have been picking which character they want to be. We've been getting their outfits together. My sister Michael is going to help us with that because. She is very gifted as a seamstress. So, yeah, we're um, counting down. We're really excited. This will be our first trip in almost a year to go back to Tennessee. Yeah. Just for the fact that I was pregnant yeah. and baby William. But then we had all the family kind of travel. We had all the family come down for Jackson's wedding, which so is we, you we know, able to great. See in there, yeah. but so we were really, really excited about that. How do you de-stress 
a lot of people had questions about, <laughs> do you ever get overstimulated and react and yell and all of these things and how do you de-stress? So I guess I'll let you answer first and then I'll sure. answer. So, I mean, everyone has stress in their lives. You know, they have situations just like, wow, this is a lot going on. And if you're a parent, I mean, you definitely have stress in your life. I think the key aspect is what do you do with the stress? Mm -hmm. And so um, taking it into an account and consideration, um, I find that what helps me is getting up before everyone else, having time in the word. Um, it really sets the tone for the day for me. And um, also just planning. Aaron helps me with just planning ahead, uh, writing down on a notepad, just, hey, these are the goals that we're trying to get done this day, this week, and yeah. having a checklist of to-do helps us kind of solidify in our minds um, what's going yeah. on and, and keep us helpful. on track. And I love organizational projects, a woodworking project. It's somewhere that would where be I can just- de-stressing for sure. Yeah, definitely de-stressing. Like I'm just like excited in my, my happy place. I like finding a mess somewhere and making it just- Lucky for me. Organized, <laughs> making it flow better. Love that. Or whatever the, the space is, make, you, make it super functional as well as aesthetically pleasing, things like that. Yeah, yes, I'm I weird, just, but- No, I, I'll take that any day. <laughs> um, I feel like as far as the questions about getting angry, yelling, and that aspect of it, I feel like we do not do that for one. I feel like it's, I don't know, maybe personality on top of that. But I feel like when yeah. you realize that anger necessarily is not a sin, yeah. it's just like- it Comes up in your in, in, yeah. inside. The flashing you, light on your car, it's telling you something's wrong, yeah. you know. Your choice of what to do with it. Yeah, so I think your reaction to that feeling is what's important. Um, so choosing not to do that, I feel, really makes the home a safe place, a place where the kids can feel like there's safety in that. Because I feel like that really kind of turns your house upside down and yeah, it's just wrong. So, you know, we do not do that, but we do have ways where we do de-stress for me. That would be cooking. Um, I love being with the kids outside. Um, I love cleaning. I love art, music. Those are kind of my outlets where I feel like I can just kind of say, okay, this is where we're at. And also I feel like when things do get out of control and you feel like this is overwhelming, just stop everything, everything you're trying to get done and just take a minute with the kids and kind of re reroute what you're doing. So whether it's taking them all outside yeah. and realizing, you know what, it's okay. If the house is a disaster, yeah. we can always get to that yeah. later. Step back from what we're doing. Yeah. Some, some of our dear friends call it a reset, you know, just a reset. Set, <laughs> step back, say, okay, reset button. Let's yeah. figure out, I, I'll reach out to her. Or she'll What's reach out to me and say, hey, I need help in this and then we'll tag team. And yeah. Work it so out. I feel like planning ahead before those moments happen where you feel like you're out of control, saying this is what I'm choosing to do when this happens. I feel like that's really important. Postpartum recovery tips. Um, I think some of this you learn just by trial and error. And whatever you're doing, you're doing amazing because uh, you're thank amazing. You. You're very sweet. <laughs> um, top on my list would be to get sunshine every day. There's something about being outside in the sunshine that just gives you those happy hormones. Um, and I, I feel sorry for everybody that's not in a warm state like we are right now because yeah, we're the, pretty much in the 70s every day. The, so. the sunshine state is nice. So yeah. we've had some cooler days that dip down into the 40s at night. Yeah. So, But there's just something about having that natural light. So if you're in a cold state, open all your blinds, open all the curtains, get it bright and open the windows if you can. Um, but that's really big. Every single day I try to be outside sometime. Um, it makes a big difference in my mood. Second would be nutrition. What are you putting into your body it makes a big difference. And I try to eat healthy as I can. Of course, there's those times where I can't help myself and I'll have to get a big slice of cheesecake or something like that. But um, I try to make it more rare where I stick to trying not to eat sugar and any white flour. So, oh, and keeping your baby close. I feel like that's a big pointer in recovering and feeling like you're really bonding with your baby is spending that quality close time cuddling and being with your baby. It's just like, you know what? It's all worth it. Like the weight gain, the way you feel, you know, your hormones trying to balance out. It's all worth it for this newborn baby. And it's such a gift. Another question we had a lot of was, do you think you'll always wear dresses in line? Um, 
a lot of people ask this and I think a lot of people are like, why don't you wear pants? Why don't you dress differently? Uh, for me personally, I feel like I feel wholesome in the dress. I feel like it's modest and I feel like I feel feminine in it. So for me, it's never been a question of if, I, if I'm going to stop doing that because I really feel like this is what God has called me personally to. I don't know. And Chad loves him. That's always a big point. You always look beautiful in the dress. Scary. So yes, our kids do wear dresses, our girls, and um, they love that. They've never questioned that. I hope that answers your question. I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, it just makes it, there's a distinguishing every, factor yeah. between girls and boys and and I, I think, think every it's, family it's is going to have to make that decision. Yeah, it's for, it's for every to. family to make. And of course, when our children get married and have families of their own, they'll have to make their own decisions and we're completely fine with whatever they choose to do. Okay, this one is kind of a fun one because it says, describe each sibling in one word. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to have to write these out because there's so many siblings. It's going to be impossible for her to use just, just one word. It's going to be know. like one word and then try to describe it. So I'm going to... I'm gonna see how well she does by just we'll one see. word. <laughs> I was just writing out my siblings' names and I keep thinking, my parents really are something special. I mean, God Yeah, we're at six years. and I'm like, how in the world? Just unbelievable. I think we were talking about it the other day. I think my mom had 11 kids at the age I am right now. Yeah, I think that's, that's what we just that's covered. That's amazing, wow. Which is unbelievable. Yeah. So, that's... Yes, God gave them the extra grace and they had so much faith. Um, here we go, I'll give you a try. Jeb, happy. He's always bubbling over. Judson is loving. Chad's laughing because I cannot do just one, it's so hard to do just one word. Callie is spunky. <laughs> Ellie is ambitious. She's always doing something and always has something she's working on. I'm trying, okay? Doing good. Adley is tender hearted. Isaiah is caring. Warden is diligent. Jackson is friendly. Yes. And by that, I mean like he is a friend to everyone. And he's never met a stranger. Katie is attentive. Attentive to people's needs and their wants even. Um, she's always buying people gifts, surprises. Okay, sorry, that's more than one. Okay, Josie is encouraging. She always has an uplifting word to say about someone. Carlin is animated. Um, Trace is loyal. Tori is sincere. She's the most genuine person I've ever known. Just real. And Alyssa is disciplined. I didn't know whether to use discipline or organize because she's amazing at being a mom. It has everything in its place. It has a schedule. It's just really amazing how she can do that. Nathan is compassionate. Lawson is fun. So much fun. And... Michaela is thoughtful. I think everyone knows that. And Zach is tenacious. So did I cover everybody? Everybody, what, I, it was very hard because I feel like a lot of people you can just name like all of these traits, but I think it's a wonderful mix in my family, how everybody's so different, different personalities, yeah. different, you know, strong points. And it's just, yeah, it's, it's amazing hard, hard when we all get together. One, one it word is to very describe hard. And they have so many I did my qualities. best, sorry guys. <laughs> you did great. You did great. So, is that the last one? That was the last question. Mm, that would well, fit in here. I mean, there's a lot I could have done, but. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for being interested in what we're doing. And um, I mean, we feel humbled uh, because we're just a, another little family that's living out life and trying to please the Lord in everything that we do. And that's a day by day basis. And we're excited about 2024. I mean, it's just, it's here already. And um, we've got plans. We've got things that we're hoping to see, dreams. And we hope to continue to bring you along for the journey. And we're excited about it. So God bless. Mm -hmm.